Hello, N4H and H here with uh, another video in the series that I'm doing um, in response to questions about my menu settings on my FTDX 5000 uh, from Yesu. So uh, yesterday I, sh I shot and posted some videos relating to CW. Uh, today I'm going to look at the menu settings I use for uh, SSB. So. I'm going to, going to go ahead here and uh, press the menu button to get into the menu mode and the OLED over here will now show you menu number, uh, what it's related to, A3J, which is sideband, um, the low cut frequency and the frequency that you want to choose for the low cut uh, frequency. So, um, turn that down a little bit. The um, Again, this is like just like with the uh, CW filters that we looked at in a previous video, uh, which were menu, uh, menus 53 through 56, these are uh, shelving filters. In other words, rolling off high end and low end. So what we're saying here is where do we want to start rolling off the lows? I like 150 hertz. Now, I'll tell you why. Um, I don't like muddy sounding audio so a lot of people run a lot of low end in their audio anyway and it just gets too too much they don't realize how muddy they sound they don't realize how inefficient that is as far as um the uh, uh the concentration of power across the audio spectrum um it's not a very efficient use of power when you're when you're pumping a lot of low end out with your signal so um, I, I cut it off at 150 just so I can comp, kind of compensate for the ones who are, uh, you know, have their microphone EQ set to pump out, uh, frequencies that low. Now, so menu 99 allows you to set the point at which the, um, audio circuit is going to start tapering off. Uh, on the low end. It's not a brick wall. It's just going to start sloping off. So let me, um, and, and you know, and this is a matter of personal preference. You may prefer 100, you may prefer 250. Um, and honestly, sometimes I, I'll i adjust it if I'm in a QSO with somebody who's really muddy and I don't want to say anything to them, you know. So I may come in here, go to menu 99 and move it up to 350, 400 just to clean them up a little bit. So I have found a happy medium to be around 150 hertz. So the next setting up, menu number 100, is controlling the slope. How much of a brick wall is that um, that uh, shelving filter for the low frequency? So what I'm saying here is, uh, let me back up a second. So 150 hertz is my starting point to shelve or slope off the low end, um, low frequencies. And again, we're talking about the audio spectrum here. So I've got it at 18 dB per octave. That means at 75 hertz, I will have knocked their audio uh, down um, from, one, from 150 hertz down to 75 hertz is going to be an 18 decibel reduction in, in level. So that's as close to a brick wall as we can get with the rig. Now, the other option is 6 dB, so it's gonna be a gradual slope. So you'll actually still hear, you know, 150, 140, 130, you know, on down to 75, but you'll hear, uh, think of it this way, you'll hear more of 75 hertz after um, 6 dB of um, slope attenuation, if you will. Um, you'll hear more of 75 hertz with this setting, you'll hear less of 75 hertz with this setting. So again, I know that the filter is not a brick wall. It's not straight down. It's going to slope, and I want as much slope as I could, again, to clean up uh, people who have very muddy audio. And so then, uh, and again, like I said, I struck a happy medium with 150 hertz. Um, you may prefer 100. You may prefer 50. And look at this. You can even turn it off. Um, or like I said, you may prefer 200, 250. Now we've got the same thing for the highs, high cut frequency. And I've got mine set to start shelving at 3200 hertz. Honestly, sometimes I have actually run at about 2900 because, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people, you know, their audio is about 2.8 uh, 
um, uh, kilohertz in uh, width or, or 2800 hertz. But every now and then you get the, you know, those who are going to be transmitting up at about 3000. Well, again, it's shelving. So if you find yourself, um, let's say your ears, your, your own hearing has lost some of the ability to hear highs. So the human voice, uh, well, let's say this, the, our hearing is generally when we're younger, we can hear even above uh, this, but our hearing is generally 20 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz. Younger people can hear even up into the mid two thousand, uh, mid twenty thousands. Um, you know, I don't know if you recall a few years back uh, they had ringtones for younger people. They could hear the ringtone on their phone, but older folks could not. So, uh, you know, bottom line is this: if your if your hearing has lost a little bit of highs, which mine has, you might want to consider maybe not starting the shelving until about thirty two hundred hertz. So you're uh, allowing the receiver to give you a little bit more highs to help uh, help with your high-end hearing. And what does that do? That, of course, helps you pull out signals that are weak, maybe uh, on, on the verge of unintelligible. Um, so I have found myself recently uh, migrating more towards a 3200 hertz starting point for the high cut, the high shelving. And then again, just like with the lows, their next setting is going to be how many decibels per octave do I want that to uh, cut? So if you look at the slope I've got here, 6 dB, I'm not, see the other choice is 18 dB. That's as close to a brick wall straight down as we can get. Uh, 6 dB is a, is a gradual slope. So in other words, if, if I'm set at th uh, 3200 hertz, then by the time I'm hearing 6400 hertz, um, with this setting, it has uh, sloped off by six decibels. And to be honest with you, uh, most of our, again, 6,400, what's that gonna do for you? Unless somebody's on a flex radio and they're intentionally running wide, like, you know, nine, uh, nine, nine 9.9 kilohertz wide, um, that 6,400 hertz is not really gonna do you any good. So you, you could probably argue that 18 dB would be fine too. Um, I've, I've been running, I've honestly, I've bounced back and forth. Uh, again compensating for my hearing on the high end so um, again you might prefer to keep it down at 2.8 if you hear highs very well that's probably not a bad place to land because let me let me give you a little advice on this the the narrower you can set your bandwidth so in other words what I'm saying is I want to hear audio between 150 Hertz and 2800 Hertz the narrower you keep that the less apt you are to hear uh, splatter or some people call bleed over from somebody having a conversation say two and a half kilohertz away you know it's a gentleman's agreement that we try to keep our QSOs three kilohertz uh, separation on sideband so if you are if you're set here at 3200 and and someone's conversation three kilohertz away um, you're hearing that little honky sound, you know, that because they're a little bit wide. Um, then one of the things you can do to help out is if you can, if your ears can still hear enough highs to be able to operate at 2800 hertz, um, then uh, you, th that will help in from the audio side of the radio, not not the IF necessarily, um, or you know, not the same as the um, um, width, filter width here, the IF filters and things like that. Um, this can actually help just dropping it down in the audio chain now again you if you got that scenario you might want to consider 2800 and then go ahead and put in uh, the brick wall you know 18 decibels per octave so what we're saying now is that at twice 2800 so 4600 Hertz by the time um, frequencies of 4600 Hertz are coming out of the speaker uh, they have been cut by 18 decibels. So um, I, again, I, I'm going to run it at, I usually run it at 3200 just because of my hearing, little hearing loss in the high end. And I'm, I've been letting it just slope off. But I highly recommend if you can get away with it, running an 18 dB um, per octave uh, slope and, and drop this down to about 2800. Okay, and now, now you know, if you're in a situation, if you watch my other videos, 
If you're in a situation where even setting, setting uh, the 2800 and the brick wall here um, is not enough, uh, let me show you. I'm going to jump out of the menu a second. You know, of course you can go to IF, and even if you do have your filter or your audio set to, to allow 2.8 kilohertz of bandwidth or 2800 hertz, of course you in the IF stage, which is, which is the best place to do this, you can drop it down. So let's say somebody's interfering with me from two and a half kilohertz away. I can easily go down to 2.1 and that'll help combat that. Again, I covered that in previous videos, so I'm not gonna go too uh, far with it here. You know, you also involve shift and things like that to, to help out. Okay, so that covers the uh, sideband audio shelving. Again, there are two filters, one for the lows. Where do you want the lows to start tapering off? Set that frequency. Uh, and one for the highs. Where do you want the highs to start tapering off? So if you think about it, you're creating um, almost like an inverted V with your audio signal, but you want to you have a flat top in the middle, if you will. So in my case here, the flat top is between 150 and, two, and 3200 hertz. And then after 3200, it slopes off. And, uh, and then below 150 hertz, it slopes off. Okay, um, I'll cover other, other things related to uh, receive audio in a subsequent video. Hope you found this uh, helpful and uh, informative. And 73 from N4H&H.